Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who's the same today, yesterday, and forever. More God. We serve a loving God, a kind God, a justice God, a God who's always the same today, yesterday, and forever. More God. We serve a God that is so faithful that he will not disappoint you. So faithful that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So faithful that he will not not fail you, my brothers and sisters. That he is not a man that he should not lie. Nor is he a son of man should he ever change his mind. He don't get down like that. He don't rock like that. We might get down like that. We might rock like that. But the God we serve, the God we praise, hallelujah, he does not get down or upward like that. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And every day should be a day to give him thanks and praise and glory. Not because you want something. Not because of your need of anything. Because you are in love. Because you are in love with Jesus. Jesus should be your everything. On an everyday, daily basis. And you, and you should always... And you should always put Jesus first place in your life. That's how amazing he is. That's how good he is. And if you have not given him the days of praise and glory yet, what are you waiting on? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us moved today, going to keep us full today. Oh, Heavenly Father God, there's no place that we would rather be at today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, this lift me up with thanksgiving and praise. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, what you're about to do in our life right now today. We thank you, Father God, that we're able, to, Father God, to put our faith, our trust, and our hope into your hands again today, God. Oh, God, we're so thankful today, Father God, that we're able to seek you today, Father God, in your house. Father God, oh God, we might not understand what you're doing, Jesus, but Father God, we're still holding on to your unchanged hands, and there's no way that we're going to let it go, Father God. Oh God, today is the day that you have made, and we are so glad, we are so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Father God, I'm asking you today, allow your presence to move to this place, allow your love to move through this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship right now today in your place. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Father God, you are welcome. You're invited right now today to enter into your sanctuary today, your house right now today, on your YouTube channel right now today, your platform right now today, my brother's homes, my brother's life, my sister's homes, and my sister's life. Father God, I'm asking you to fill us up more with the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, Father God, I know that you're going to show up and I know that you're going to show out. Oh, God, I know that you're going to speak to somebody today through this word today, Father God. Oh, God, someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone's about to call upon your name today, Jesus. And God, that you're about to move in like you never moved in before. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, for your presence. We thank you, Father God, for who you are. We thank you, Father God, that we are drawing closer to you, Father God, that you are drawing closer to us right now today. Father God, we just want to say this thank you, Father God, because you are so awesome and you are so mighty to us. Holy Spirit, you are, you are welcome. You are invited right now today 
to enter to the house of the Lord right now, his sanctuary right now, on his YouTube channel right now, on his platform right now, in my sister's homes right now, into my sister's life, into my brother's homes, into my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill us up more of the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now in this place right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do some things that you never done before right now. I'm asking you to allow every viewer, everyone that go past Jesus' YouTube channel, let them catch the Holy Ghost fire right then and now. Oh God, we just thank you, Father God, for your presence because your presence is real. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise. We are available for service. We are available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, we are available for you. And I'm so thankful. I'm grateful. I'm honored of this blessing today, Father God, that I'm able to pray and have and praise and have fellowship with all my brothers and sisters around the world around the globe today. Father God, we thank you. We honor you. And we love you, Jesus, in your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praying is an everyday thing. Praise is an everyday thing. Repentance is an everyday thing. We all drop the ball. We all make mistakes. And we all fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. If it lasts one of the story, I'm not perfect. I fall every day. That's why I repent and ask God for forgiveness. Because I need him, I depend on him, and I rely on him. There's no need to try to lie about it. There's no need to try to sugarcoat it. There's no need to try to sweep it up on the rug. Because he saw what you done, he heard what you said, and he's already aware of the situation. So if you can't keep it real, be honest with Jesus. You can't keep it real, be honest with nobody, my brothers and sisters. So I need my keep it real, brothers and sisters, to join me in repentance. That's okay with you. Lord Jesus, I'm asking in your name right now today to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, they be done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as milk right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. And Jesus, before I get started, there's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I want more of you and less of myself, Jesus. That's why I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm going to grow closer to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you get it for God's word, let the church say your name. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him. But you can't thank him enough. Let me get into this word, my brothers and sisters. If somebody thought they had you. Someone thought that they always continue to string you along. Play with your emotions. Play with your feelings. They thought they can tell you anything and that that you're going to be not smart enough. Believe it. 
they had a plan. Their plan was for them to continue to do the things in the world and leave you right there thinking that you always going to be right there waiting on them. Their plan was continue to play with your feelings and that you always thought that you was going to be right there. Their plan was continue to play with the wrong crowd and when they got tired of playing that they was going to come back to you. Their plan was continue to do all kind of dirty things and thinking you always going to be right there. Their plan was to move someone else and be with him and be with her and when it didn't work out, their plan was to return back to you and think that their door was still going to be open. Their plan was to jump fence to fence until they got tired of jumping, until they got tired of running, and they was going to jump back to you and run back to you with open arms and say, can you please take me back? I was thinking about you the whole time. You was always on my mind. I didn't want nobody else but you. That was their plan. Their plan was to leave you right there on the sideline wondering and thinking all day long. But see, their plan didn't work. You see, because it wasn't God's plan. It was their plan. You see, when their plan didn't work, now they looking stupid right now. Right now, they don't know if they're coming or going right now because God had to shut some doors on that person. Because God knew they was playing with you. He knew they hard was not into you. And he got tired because you was in there waiting on them. You was actually being faithful. You was actually being obedient. But God knew how nasty and how disrespectful they was. Because that wasn't God's plan for you. It wasn't God's plan for you to sit on the sideline to be worried. It wasn't God's plan for you to sit there to be lonely like that. It wasn't God's plan for somebody to continue to play with you and humiliate you and disrespect you and do you wrong. That wasn't God's plan. That was their plan. Because they thought they had you. They were going to continue to swing you along. But God knew that you were not going to cut the string. He had to cut the string for you. Because that was their plan. Their plan was to move you somewhere else and do you the same way they did you while you was right there in that same place. That was their plan. Or if I can get him down here, or if I can get her down here, oh, I got him now. They was going to continue to manipulate you, play you, and disrespect you because they thought they had you. They thought that you were so much in love with them that they felt like that they can do any and everything to you and how they can do it and when they can do it because they thought they had you. It was all part of their plan. They had designed it, masterminded, and everything how it was going to work. Because why? They thought they had you. But Jesus said, nah. He ain't going down like that. He said, nah. They ain't how that plan going to work. Jesus said, I am the architect. I am the blueprint. Jeremiah 1 and 5 said, for I knew everything about you before you was even formed. He said, I knew the mistakes that you was going to make, but I also knew how and when you was going to get back on track. I said, I have a plan for you. You might not understand it. It might not even make sense. But Jesus said, I have a plan for you. A plan that I'm not going to string you along with heaven, Jesus. A plan that I'm not going to play with your feelings. A plan that I'm not going to play with your emotions. A plan that I'm not going to humiliate you or disrespect you. But I have a plan 
for you. And my plan is a masterpiece plan. My plan is going to work. My plan is going to wow you. My plan is going to amaze you. My plan is going to make you shout and say glory and hallelujah. My plan is a more than enough plan. Somebody got to say, I know Jesus got a plan for me. You might not understand it. It might not even make sense to you. It might not even be clear to you. But you got to tell yourself right now today, no matter how painful your life may look like right now, how, how difficult it might look like right now, you got to tell yourself right now today, I know Jesus has a plan for me because this can't be the end of my life. This can't be the end of my story. I know something got to be better out there for me. I know something amazing got to happen. Because when you serve a God, like the God we serve, the God we pray, hallelujah, you got to know that Jesus has a plan for you. So this is not the end of my life. Tell yourself, this is not the end of my story. It might have been the end of the chapter. But it's not the end of my story. You got to continue to walk with Jesus. You got to continue to seek him each and every day. And put your faith and put your trust and put your hope in Jesus. Say, I know that you got something better for me. I don't went through hell and back, Jesus. I don't went through this. I don't went through devastation. But I know that you got something better for me. Yes, Jesus, I hooked up with the wrong man. Yes, Jesus, I hooked up with the wrong woman. Yes, Jesus, I hooked up with the wrong company. Yes, Jesus, I hooked up with the wrong friends. But I know, Jesus, that you got a plan for me. He got a perfect plan. That's the difference. See, they thought that they had you because they had a plan. But Jesus has a perfect plan for you. And I know. I'm glad you asked me. Can you please take your back to Jeremiah 29? And we're going to read verses 11 and 12. Jeremiah 29. And we're going to read verses 11 and 12. And if you have your Bible soaked, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For I know the plans I have for you. I ain't got to preach no more. He just spoke to you right, right there, my sisters. He just spoke to you right there, there my brothers. He said, for I know, not the person that was playing you, not the person that was stringing you along, not the person they thought that they had you, but Jesus said, for I know. He said, I knew before your parents knew. I knew before your grandparents knew. I knew before anybody knew. He said, for I know. He know. Because he created you. He designed you. He's the architect of you. He is the blueprint, the mastermind. Of you, my brother and sisters. That's how you know. For I know the plans I have for you. Tell you stuff. Jesus got a plan for me. That, that should move you through the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year. So I know that Jesus has a plan for me. And you know what he said? Declares the Lord. That means he know it and he meant it. He said, declare me, he know I got something for you. He mean he know he got something better out there for you. He know he's telling you, you can count on that, you can depend on that, and you can always rely on that because he declare it. Declare me, he's about business. He mean what he say, and he say what he mean. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Plans to prosper you. Not plans to leave you on the sideline. Not plan to, to, to think, oh, did God really got a plan for me? Not plan to leave you, to string you along, to hurt you. But plan to what? To prosper. Mean to grow. Mean to elevate. It mean to take you to another level, a neck, another high. That's what it means. Plans for you to prosper, to have more than one enough. Abundantly in the scenery. Hallelujah. Plans to prosper you and what? Not to harm you. See, they was harming you by playing with you. See, they was harming you by stringing you along. They was harming you by telling lies. Telling you this and telling you one thing. See, they was harming you, but Jesus 
is not going to harm you. Do you see the difference? See, they thought that they had you. See, they were their plan. But Jesus said, I know the plan I have for you. Hallelujah. Plans to give you what? Hope. Not the plans to devastate you. Not plans to leave you wondering. Not plans just to leave you on the sideline wondering if they coming back. But God said, plans to give you hope. Every day is a day of hope. Because you never know the day might be your day. That everything in your life comes all together and manifests. That's what he means by plans to give you hope. To believe and to trust in him. In his words. In his promises every day. And not nobody else. In the future. Get that on my. He said, you're going to prosper. See, you're going to he said, have hope and to have a future. He gave you three promises of his plans. See, the other person, they thought they had you. They have a plan for you to prosper, to give you hope, or to have a future with you. Because they ain't want no future with you. That's the first thing they didn't have. They didn't give you hope. They gave you false hope. And they didn't have a plan. It was their plan to harm you again. It was their plan to hurt you again. It was their plan to devastate you again. It was their plan to stream you along again. That's why I say they thought that they had you. But Jesus had to cut the stream because he knew he had a perfect plan for you. If you know that Jesus has a plan for you, say, Jesus, I know that you got a perfect plan for me. Everything I don't went through, everything I have encountered, I know that you have a perfect plan for me. I might not understand it. It might not be clear to me, but I know that you have a plan for me. You know what I don't went through. I know there's somebody out there for me. I know you got something better for me. I know that you have a future for me. And if you really, really, really know that, my brothers and sisters, right now, you should be giving Jesus some thanks and praise and glory. Say, Jesus, after everything I don't went through in my life, I'm still here for a reason. I'm still for a purpose. I might not understand why I'm still here. But Jesus, I know that you have a perfect plan for me. A plan that's going to give you hope going to give you a future. A plan is not going to harm you. But it's going to boost you and take you to another level. And if you know that Jesus has a plan for you, tell yourself right now, Jesus, I know that you have a plan for me. And if you like what you just heard right now, and you know that Jesus is speaking to you directly, go and hit his like button real quick. Go and hit the subscribe button real quick. And say, Jesus, Thank you for the plan that you have for me. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. If you pray that simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in your life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, oh, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Wilders.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always continue to seek him and praise him and glorify him. Always continue to keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see anything happening. Even though the situation is still looking like it's looking. Even though it's still dark. The light got to shine, shine sooner or later. The sun has to shine on you sooner than later. You continue to trust him. Continue to hold on to his unchanged hands. And please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me 
as you continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus has a plan for you.